Look, the New York Times, which for President Barack Obama was something of a Pravda, it was a pure propaganda for the Democratic Party during the Obama presidency, they wrote a cover story from Peter Baker, their White House correspondent, a week and a half or so ago, entitled, you know, at age 79, Biden is pushing the limits, limits of age in the presidency. Literally three days after that cover story for the Times was written, Michelle Goldberg, who's one of the Times' most reliably progressive opinion columnists, she wrote a column saying, look, Joe Biden is very clearly too old to be president again. So the fix is in. He's not going to be the nominee at this point in 2024. You can mark those words, I think, right now. The only question is whether he should resign right now. I think it is really that bad. He is messing up everywhere he goes. He is making a muddle everywhere he goes. He's going to get us into World War III at this point. He needs to go. He should resign. All right, Josh, if he does resign, uh, that would mean that we have a President Kamala Harris. Are you ready for that? Look, Kamala Harris is awful. She is, you know, less popular in many respects than venereal disease. She failed to rack up a single delegate to the Democratic National Convention, if I recall. She is, and she is also an astoundingly terrible, inept, inept uh, dim-witted, one might even say venal and corrupt politician. But at a, at a bare minimum, she does not have a loose enough tongue that is going to literally talk us into World War III. I think if you look at what Joe Biden has done over the past few months, you know, in Warsaw and Poland in, in late March, he was talking about Vladimir Putin. He said Putin and quote unquote cannot remain in power. The point that I made in my column was during the Cold War, generations of American presidents, going back all the way to Eisenhower and Jack Kennedy, of course, President Reagan, when he was negotiating with Mikhail Gorbachev towards the end of the Cold War, they knew never, they knew that you would never, ever, ever call for regime change in the Kremlin, because to do so would be to risk nuclear war against a, a hegemon that has thousands of nuclear weapons. So he did that. In May, just a couple months after that, he said that, that, that of course, yes, the U.S. would go into Taipei, we would defend Taiwan if, if Beijing goes in. That is actually not the commitment that the U.S. made under the Taiwan Relations Act in 1979. Just this past week, when he landed in Israel, he spoke of defending the quote unquote truth and honor of the Holocaust. I mean, are you kidding me? These are disgusting, disgusting comments. Meanwhile, he's over there, he's throwing Israel under the bus, he's taking the Israeli flag off his motorcade, traveling to meet Holocaust denialists, Mahmoud Abbas, and quote unquote East Jerusalem. The, the, the whole thing is just really, really awful. So, as bad as Kamala Harris is, I will take her and avoid the risk of getting into World War III until we can depose the Democratic Party regime come 2024. Now, all indications do say that Republicans are poised to take back the House, possibly the Senate, coming in November with the midterm elections. If they do, uh, and provided that we still have President Joe Biden versus President Kamala Harris, what can be done, in your opinion, to curb inflation, those high gas prices, uh, and, and some of those, those other really, really painful uh, high price problems facing our country? So the reality is there's unfortunately not a, a ton that the Republicans can do if they retake Congress and Democrats remain in power in the White House. It is worth bearing in mind, of course, that conservatives do currently control the U.S. Supreme Court. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a lawyer by training. This last Supreme Court term that ended was the most prolific term of, of my adult lifetime. It was a remarkable string of pretty substantive doctrine shifting conservative victories. So one thing that does, does come immediately to mind is the conservative kind of activist litigation shops all across the country, things like Stephen Miller's America First Legal, various litigation outlets like that, really should get out there and start filing aggressive lawsuits that could potentially make a meaningful impact. Obviously, if there's one thing that Congress can totally do, and it doesn't matter what, whether the White House is on board, is they can make very, very heavy use of the subpoena power. They can use subpoena power to call lots of investigations, try to get to the bottom of things like the Hunter Biden fiasco, Hillary Clinton email. You know, we, we, we can start subpoenaing the January 6th clown show brigade. We, we, we can literally start calling, you know, people like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger to the stand after they are private citizens and after they are defeated come November. So things of that nature Republicans can do. But obviously when it comes to legislation, look, uh, inflation is just it, it is catastrophically bad right now. And gasoline prices are, are at a four decade high. You know, the CPI in June year over year was up 9.1% 9, 9 on an annualized basis here. So it, it, you would like to think that this should not be a particularly partisan issue. So right. obviously, right. you know, if Republicans retake the House and the Senate, a bare minimum, they should, they should try to pass kind of things that will increase domestic supply, that will kind of reshore industries that will get manufacturing production up to try to get prices down. You would like to think that a President Biden or President Harris could certainly get on board with that at least. All right. Uh, Josh Hammer, most recent column called Resign, Joe. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and for sharing your insights.